Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and today we're going to go over the most common labs you need to know for the NCLEX exam and as a nurse. So whenever you get done watching this YouTube video, don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on these lab values. So let's get started. When you take the NCLEX exam, there is a high probability that you're going to encounter some type of lab value question. And the reason for this is whenever you're working as a nurse, especially in a hospital, almost every patient that walks through that door is going to have blood work performed because the blood work tells us what's going on with our patient and how we can care for them. So NCLEX is going to really hit on those common labs that you're going to be experiencing on a daily basis on the job. So what are they? Well, a CBC, a complete blood count. This tells us about the cells in our blood, like our red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, all those important cells that help us maintain life. In addition, arterial blood gases, ABGs. This tells us the acid base imbalance in our patients. Um, especially if our patients having a respiratory or metabolic problem, it can tell us how bad it is and if our treatment is working to help correct the problem. Another thing is metabolic panels. This can be a basic like a BMP or comprehensive like a CMP. And this tells us really important things like our patient's fluid and electrolyte status. How's our potassium, our sodium, our calcium, glucose, along with our patient's renal function, their BUN and creatinine. And if it's comprehensive, it can tell us how that liver is performing as well. Another thing you want to know, especially if your patient's on anticoagulants, are their coag levels, their coagulation levels, like that PTINR, APTT. And this is going to tell us how our patient's clotting, what's their clotting time, and if they're therapeutic on their medication. And lipid panels, this is assessing the patient's cardiovascular risk for disease. And we're looking at the LDL, the HDL, the total cholesterol and triglycerides. And the last thing are those drug levels because patients, many of our patients are on drugs that have this narrow therapeutic level like digoxin, dilantin, lithium. And we want to know, is it safe to give this drug? What's their drug level? Now, when you take the NCLEX exam and you're looking at those lab values and you're trying to determine, is this normal or abnormal? You need to know that NCLEX is gonna give you something that is noticeably abnormal. It's not gonna be right on the line or close to the normal range. And the reason for that is because lab ranges for the normal really vary depending on the lab and the text. Like for instance, some things will say that a normal mag is 1.5 to 2.3, while another one may say it's 1.5 to 2.5. So NCLEX is gonna give you something that's really abnormal and you're gonna know it's abnormal. So first, let's start out talking about the complete blood count, the CBC. This tells us about the cells in our blood. So what's a normal RBC range, a red blood cell range? It should be 4.5 to 5.5 million. For white blood cells, WBCs, it should be 5,000 to 10,000. For platelets, it should be 150,000 to 400,000. Now, some terms you wanna be familiar with would be like thrombocytopenia. What is that? That is a low platelet count. So if they say that to you, you know that's gonna be less than 150,000. Or how about a patient with leukopenia? That is a low white blood cell count. So a count less than 5,000. Now let's look at our hemoglobin and hematocrit levels. This tells us about our red blood cells. And we really use this when we're transfusing packed red blood cells. We wanna know that hemoglobin level really. And it varies between the female and the male, and I would remember the differences. For a female, a, a normal hemoglobin range is 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. A normal hematocrit is 37 to 47%. And for a male, a normal hemoglobin is 14 to 18 grams per deciliter. And a normal hematocrit is 42 to 52%. Now let's look at coagulation levels. If your patient's on an anticoagulant, you definitely wanna know their coagulation levels. For instance, if they're on warfarin, you wanna know their PTINR. And if they're on heparin, you wanna know that APTT. So let's look at this PTINR. 
PT stands for prothrombin time. And a normal PT level in someone who's not on any anticoagulant should be 10 to 12 seconds. An INR is calculated from the PT. And INR stands for International Normalized Ratio. And normally it should be less than one. And this is for someone who's not taking any anticoagulants, specifically warfarin. But how about they are taking warfarin? What do we want that INR level to be so they're therapeutic, so this drug is working to prevent blood clots? We would want their INR to be between two to three. So if it's less than two, to, this Coumadin, this Warfarin is not really achieving what we need. So their dose would need to be increased. If it was way greater than three, they are at risk for bleeding. So their dose would need to be decreased. Now let's look at this APTT. This stands for activated partial thromboplastin time. And this is used to, for patients who are taking heparin. A normal APTT in a patient who's not taking heparin is 30 to 40 seconds. Now, if they're taking heparin, we need them to be within this certain range so they're therapeutic and this drug is working. So, we would want it to be one and a half to two and a half times this normal range, which, which ends up being about 60 to 80 seconds. Now, if they were less than 60, that would mean that we're not achieving what we need. They're not therapeutic, so their dose would need to be increased of heparin. If they're greater than 80 seconds, it's taking them way too long to clot, so they really have too much heparin in their system, so their dose would need to be decreased. Now let's switch and let's look at the metabolic panel. Again, this is gonna tell us about our fluid and electrolytes, which will include glucose, our renal function, and if it's comprehensive, it's gonna tell us how our liver is functioning as well. So let's look at these ranges. Okay, glucose. A normal glucose is 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter. Calcium level is 8.5 to 10.5 milligrams per liter. Chloride is 95 to 105 milli equivalents per liter. Magnesium is 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, phosphorus is 2.5 to 4.5 milligrams per deciliter. Potassium is 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. And a sodium is 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter. Now how I remember those is that they're like multiples of five. Like everything is represented with five. So if you can remember that, it'll help keep you straight. Now let's look at our renal function. Our BUN and creatinine will tell us that. A normal BUN is five to 20. A normal creatinine is 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Now we're getting into liver function. So let's look at total protein. That is 6.2 to 8.2 grams per deciliter. And then albumin. This is another protein. Remember, albumin played a huge role in regulating our oncotic pressure. And it's 3.4 to 5.4 grams per deciliter. Then we have these three enzymes that are found in the liver. It's the ALP, the ALT, and the AST. And if these are abnormal, it could indicate liver disease or some type of other disease in the body. So a normal ALP, which stands for alkaline phosphatase, is 40 to 120 units per liter. Then we have ALT, which stands for alveline transaminase, and a normal range is seven to 56 units per liter. And then the AST, which is aspartate transaminase, a normal is 10 to 40 units per liter. Then the last part of our metabolic panel is the bilirubin. And this substance is created when you have the breakdown of red blood cells. And when red blood cells break down, they release this reddish orangish color. And a normal bilirubin level should be less than one milligrams per deciliter. But if your patient has an elevated one, you will notice that they will have this orangish yellowish 
hue to their skin or this mucous membrane where all this bilirubin has collected in the blood and has just leaked into the skin giving them that like pumpkin hue appearance. Now let's look at the lipid panel. This test is going to tell us about our patient's risk for cardiovascular disease and it's going to look at the LDL, the HDL, the total cholesterol, and the triglycerides. So LDL, this stands for low density lipoprotein and we want this value to be low. So we want it to be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Now the HDL, which stands for high density lipoprotein, we want this number to be high and we want it greater than 60 milligrams per deciliter. So some people get these confused, but how I remember it is that L for LDL stands for low, so we want that number low. And the HDL, it stands for high, so we want this number high. Now total cholesterol, we want that less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, and then triglycerides less than 150 milligrams per deciliter. Now let's move on to arterial blood gases, ABGs. I have a whole video on how to interpret ABGs to know if it's respiratory metabolic problem, if it's acidosis, alkalosis, compensation, partial compensation, and check out that video because it'll show you how to do the tic-tac-toe method and really simplify how to get those answers. But you wanna know the normal ranges for those. So a blood pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Anything less than 7.35 is acidic. Anything greater than 7.45 is alkaline. Then we have a PCO2. The normal range for that is 35 to 45. And I have switched them here because anything greater than 45 is acidic and anything less than 35 is alkaline. Then we have bicarb HCO3. The normal range is 22 to 26. And anything less than 22 is acidic and anything greater than 26 is alkaline. Then we have PO2, which normal is 80 to 100%. And then we have oxygen saturation, and a normal is about 96, 95 to 100%. Now let's switch to the hemoglobin A1C test. This test is really helpful in helping us determine the average glucose in a person over the last three months. So it's great for patients who have diabetes so we can see their average glucose. So what do we want this number to be? Well, in a person who does not have diabetes, we would want them to have a hemoglobin A1C of four to 6%. But if they have diabetes, we would like for their target hemoglobin A1C to be less than 7%. Now let's wrap up this lecture and let's talk about the most common drug levels you may encounter on NCLEX. So first up is digoxin. A normal DIG level is 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. Then we have carbamazepine, which is Tegretol. Normal level is 4 to 10 micrograms per milliliter. Dilantin, a normal level is 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. Then Theophylline, normal level, same as Dilantin, is 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. Then we have phenobarbital, a normal level is 15 to 40 micrograms per milliliter. Lithium at 0.5 to 1.2 millimoles per liter. And then lastly, valproic acid, also known as Depico. It is 50 to 100 micrograms per milliliter. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the most common lab values you need to know for the NCLEX exam. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.